people tend to get, dare I use the word desperate, and they do tend to start just applying for every single job that they see on a job board with the same resume, with the same cover letter, and that spray and pray approach just doesn't work, especially when you are approaching the job market in 2020. You need to be more strategic, you need to not panic, you need to retain a sense of control, and you, you wanna make sure that the dynamics of how you approach your job search are, are mature. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Mind to Lead podcast. And today is a bit of a special episode. I am sat with my gorgeous business partner and best friend, Pamela Cordwell. Pam, amazing to have you back here today. Delighted to be having yet another chat with my beautiful co-founder. Yes. Well, look, we sat down at the beginning of the week because Pam and I have a passion for really helping people who are currently finding themselves you know, unemployed. And unfortunately, unemployment is on the rise. Now, Pam and I have I think we've had a combined experience of recruitment for over, over 20 years. So we've seen it all, we've heard it all, and we wanted to really do this podcast today to help people who, you know, are finding themselves in the job market after a number of years, who have no idea how to approach companies or write a resume or even interview, or even they're thinking this time, maybe I want a career change. And how should I be spending this time? How should I be thinking about the job market now because we are living in a new world. Uh, the competition is going to be fierce and um, really the whole spray and pray, uh, you know, mentality of, you know, searching for jobs is not going to cut it. So before we get stuck in, Pam, um, over to you. Just give uh, the listeners a little bit of an introduction into who you are and um, yeah, why, why you love recruitment. <laughs> yeah, well, I must love it. I'm on my, in my 14th year. Um, yeah, look, I've been in recruitment for 14 years. Um, I have recruited um, for quite a number of years in the UK and again, quite a number of years in Australia now. And I've recruited for small companies, mid-sized companies and international global investment banks. So I have seen it all. The entire of that time has been, I've specialised across the technology and digital market. And yeah, look, I just have a real passion for working with people. One thing that I do love about operating in the recruitment space is that day-to-day -day interaction and really assisting people with how to strategically approach the job market and coach those people through to the next steps in their career. Um, obviously, you and I established CH Solutions two and a half years ago now, and you know it's been a little bit of a different slant. Um, it's obviously been growing a business um, and also taking more of a leadership role and, you know, bringing through staff to be able to in turn provide candidates with that experience and, and helping them find jobs now as well. So bringing up the next generation of recruiters. Mm, absolutely. And look, I mean, you in your 14 years of recruitment, you've obviously experienced a lot. And I remember speaking to you when all of this kicked off because you've actually recruited uh, through the global financial crisis. So you, I remember you saying to me, you know, I know what's about to come. I know how challenging this is going to get. So I love to pick your brain now on what what sort of happened during that time? What did you see people, where did you see people go wrong when it came to applying for jobs and maybe even businesses who were leading through that time as well? So yeah, any sort of knowledge that you could embark on people? Yeah, time? you know, I, th I think when you've actually recruited through a time like that, the good thing about having that experience is that I have weathered the storm and when you're in the thick of it, it's a very challenging time. Uh, but you do come out of it and it's about keeping the faith and being able to ride the wave of, of what's to come and ultimately there's going to be a lot of challenges ahead. I think being at the front of recruitment at a time when you, you, you find yourself in the midst of a recession, it can actually bear quite heavily on you. You know, you are speaking to people that have lost their jobs, they've lost that, they've lost that security of the income um, that they're used to securing. You know, you're you're potentially dealing with sole earner families. You know, and you're speaking with um, 
women or men who are the sole income earners for their families and all of a sudden that's been pulled away from them and they find themselves on benefits and you know as a recruiter you, you find yourself in quite a unique position where you really need to strike that balance between you know acting as a bit of a a coach you know a bit of a life coach you know you need to be able to utilize those skills to be able to really truly listen to people the situation that they're finding themselves in and help know that you're truly adding value to their job search and and, and making sure that you're really matching them you know in a way that, that that's truly going to help them so it, it as a recruiter, in times like this, you know, you're 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 really utilising a lot of different skills because you are that bit of a life coach and a career coach as well. Um, and it's just about marrying the two up. But I think it's it's definitely what what I did find throughout the the GFC is that people tend to get dare I use the word desperate, and they do tend to start just applying for every single job that they see on a job board with the same resume with the same cover letter and that spray and pray approach just doesn't work especially when you are approaching the job market in 2020 you need to be more strategic you need to not panic you need to retain a sense of control and you you want to make sure that the dynamics of how you approach your job search um are, are mature you know, you, you want to present yourself in the right light. And in times of desperation, people do tend to panic. So that's one of the things that I do remember about the GFC. I would see the same person coming through and just time after time, every time there was a job posted with the, with the same the same approach. And, and that doesn't necessarily work. It's not the best way to market yourself. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And um, I think, you know, we've seen a spike in our ads by like, I don't know, 25% even in the last week, like more people are applying for work. And, and you're right, you're seeing the same people come up in every single job that we post. And, you know, just think it is completely the wrong approach. And, you know, so let, let's talk about that. Because I mean, I read a stat before we jumped on the call to say that one in 10 Australians are going to be out of work by Christmas. Now, I hate seeing stats like that and I think that again just completely proves the point that you just said that our approach now matters how we go about you know applying for jobs our mindset because what you just said then about the whole desperation piece and the panic like let's stay calm let's stay focused let's focus on the end result which is we want to get a job but I also think it all starts with the whole mindset piece and the belief in I can get this job I am capable. I, you know, what can I do day to day to to boost that self belief? And, you know, I think one thing that everyone I would I would advise people to be doing right now is upskilling themselves. Spend some time researching what are the trends. You know, like what is going to what do companies need right now? You know, like and and let's just talk to that. Like if we had somebody reach out to us right now, let's say a recruiter was was listening to this and they found themselves out of work. What would what would you like to see if you had somebody message you today on LinkedIn? What would like be a good approach that would get your attention? Good question. Um, well, first of all, I would really like a, a personal approach. So I think too often um, people see an ad and they think, you know, sending their resume through an online job application. What next? Let's just sit and wait, and you know, they will complain that we didn't get a response you know um i think but how i would like to see it is definitely having that approach you know to send a definitely apply where we can have a look at the profile and then maybe go online have a little look at their online presence but i would love to see a real proactive approach i would love to have someone follow up with a little bit of a snippet of information about a piece of content that they've seen posted by myself or you georgie um or a bit of knowledge and information about CH Solutions to really show that that person is actually proactively interested in joining our company. That would grab my eye. That is unique. That is not just a spray and pray approach. That's someone that is taking stock of the companies that they're looking to apply to. They've strategically thought, okay, I like these companies. This is why I like them. And this is who I'm going to reply, um, apply to. And they're being proactive in, in terms of following up. So I think that that's definitely um, something that I would love to see if someone was approaching myself about coming to work, coming to work for us. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, what, what do you think? What would you, what do you think that you would like to see? How, how do you think? A, what do you think a good approach would be? Yeah, I, I'm completely with you. I think a more, um, you know, targeted and personal approach. You know, somebody who's been on my profile, your profile, been on the website. You know, yeah, like you say, after hi Georgie, I've just seen one of your articles and thought it was fantastic. Um, you know, I, I'm actually currently finding myself on the job market right now, and uh, you know, this is my background, this is my experience. I'd love to discuss with you um, how I could add some value to your company, um, or even if you were a maybe a web developer or social media manager right now, and you maybe went onto our website and thought, oh, okay, maybe they're not optimizing that, that, and that. Again, somebody who's in the social media uh, space could be looking at companies with uh, perhaps not optimized social media presence right now and offer their skills. Skills. I think we have to have a bit of a out of the box thinking right now. I think that the traditional model of spray and pray or just applying for tons of jobs online, it's not going to cut it. You know, we really have to be more proactive because another thing that um, I, I read online as well, and I know you and I will completely agree with this, is that only 20% of the jobs are actually advertised, meaning that, you know, 80% of the jobs that are out there aren't even advertised. So, how can people go about finding those hidden jobs? Like any advice on how people can go about doing that? Yeah, sure. What I would think is just around the power of your own network as well. You know, don't forget to keep in touch with your previous employers. Don't forget to touch, keep in touch with previous colleagues. Don't forget to keep in touch with mentors. You know, the power of your network is, is incredible. And when you are actually in the job market, make sure that you connect with these people again, even if you've not connected in, in a while. Let them know that you are on the job market. Let them know what is important to you in your next role, what you're really looking for in that next career, career step. And ask for introductions to people that are in their network as well. Be proactive, you know, take take that sort of approach. And I know we're in the middle of a pandemic at the moment, so we can't quite be going to, you know, actual physical networking events. But how much easier is it now? There's so many online networking events at the moment. And all you have to do is hit up Google to find networking events that fall within your category. Join them you know, and start really expanding your network that way. But definitely, you know, speaking to the people that have, that have physically worked with you before, that know you as a person, um, they know your work well. And if they can recommend you, you're, you know that you're, you're, you're going to be joining somewhere that you, you'll thrive in because they know exactly who you are and how you operate. Yeah, I completely agree. And I, I guess I, I love like using your network first and foremost. That is just such powerful advice. And I think the other thing is that, you know, if you have a certain skill set and you've identified perhaps a, you know, a few companies that you, you know, that you align with, that you think, oh, they're doing some really good work. I'd love to work for them. Don't forget that every single company right now is... If, no one has the answers. Everyone's pivoting. Everyone's thinking about how they can innovate and really make sure that they thrive through this. So this is this could be your opportunity right now to reach out to that company that you've always wanted to work for and offer some value. Uh, reach out to the directors or the HR directors or even some of the senior team and say, I've always loved what you guys do. Uh, this is who I am. This is this is my this is what I do, blah, blah, blah. And, and yeah, just be more proactive in terms of those, those companies that you really want to work with. And, you know, I think there's a lot of people who would go, oh, I couldn't do that. I would be too scared. But, you know, I think it's really, it, it's having, it's fear or freedom. I think, you know, like it's overcoming the fear and just having the courage just to, just to do it. Like, what, what's the worst that can happen? You know, like they say, no, like, oh, like, no, no, no one's been hurt. You know, like that's it. Like it, that's really the worst case scenario. They say no, you know, and I think that no one likes hearing no, but you know, it's, it's still, it's every time you put yourself out of your comfort zone, you gain more confidence. And I think that that in itself is really, really powerful, especially during this time. So I think yeah. really, a, little really bit of a little bit of rejection's never killed anyone, has no. it? You know, you just need to learn. Again, weather the storm, you know, get on a little bit more of a thick skin. And, and you know, that's something that um, you're obviously really passionate about as well. And it's like this whole self-belief and the self-confidence. And I think people are just that little bit scared to 
put themselves out there a little bit and you know and it's it, and it does really relate to that whole self-belief piece and you are good at what you do you know believe in what you deliver on and regardless of what industry you are in believe in your own capabilities mm-hmm. and you know just definitely you know research those those companies find those points of contact and and definitely reach out to them like you know as as you said you know what is the actual worst that can happen but we know more, you know, more so than anyone. It does take that courage mm. to do it for the first time. And and again, if you've got anything that you would like to say around that whole self belief and, and courage piece, mm. um, that that could that could probably be really valuable to yeah. to touch on. Yeah, I think it's just like, again, it all comes down to self-awareness, doesn't it? And like, you know, everyone's got a unique gift. Everyone's got a strength and it's just tapping into that. And, you know, it could be starting like literally just writing down 10 of your strengths, you know, and then it could be calling some people who have worked with you and saying, hey, what did I do well? Like, you know, what do you think I could improve upon? Because these are also something that, you know, that also does build courage and and the self-belief because if when you're aware of something, you can change it right? And, you know, there might be something that might be something that you can just slightly change that you just have a complete breakthrough and go, oh, that was what was holding me back, you know? And I think that it's just becoming really self-aware during this time, reflecting, what are my strengths? What, not what are my weaknesses, but what do I need to work on? What is holding me back? Um, what's the payoff, you know, for, for that, you know, because a lot of people, I think actually they get very, like they, they like their comfort zone and to really push themselves out, you know, it takes a lot because the payoff is, oh, I get to stay in my comfort zone, but we can't afford to stay in our comfort zone anymore. We have to push out of it. And that takes courage. It takes self-belief. But the more you do it, the easier it becomes. I'm not saying it's easy, but I think, you know, if you just take one step a day and that's you reach out to, uh, you know, someone, a HR manager or, or a recruiter, or you, you know, customize your cover letter and you send it to to one person a day, then that is going to build your courage and confidence over time. And I guarantee if you do it every single day and you customize it, good things will happen. And another thing I want to touch on now is the whole power of the personal branding piece, which you know I'm really super passionate you about. You love it. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> I do think that it's so important because, you know, like, you know, well, let's just be honest, right? What is the first thing you do when you get a CV through the door? <laughs> I immediately hop onto LinkedIn. Correct. Immediately. Yeah. yeah. Right. Immediately. And what do you look at first and foremost? Look, first and foremost, I actually look at the picture and mm-hmm. the 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 profile at the top of your LinkedIn profile. That, so more so the about you piece. Correct. That would be the first thing that I would look in. And genuinely what, what I'm looking for is like a real meaningful and substantial LinkedIn profile to see, right, who is this person beyond the resume? That is, and that slams you with first impressions. Correct. Okay. And, and first impressions last. Mm-hmm. So I think people have underestimated the power of their online presence Mm -hmm. and the power of a personal brand. Mm -hmm. And I definitely know personal branding is something that you have been incredibly passionate about. And it is very forward thinking. Um, So in terms of how do you, what would would your advice to be for someone that really hasn't thought much about their personal brand? What would be the first steps that that you would would recommend to them? Mm Well, the first thing obviously is you need to know like what you're passionate about and what you stand for, you know? So let's just say if you are a, I don't know, a software engineer, right? You want to be known as the expert in that field, in your area of expertise, right? So I would be thinking about, you know, making sure that I've got all, any awards that I have won on there. I've got testimonials on there. I've got a really good bio that says exactly what I do and what, you know, who am I, you know, my key skills. And then I would be looking to engage um, on on the on LinkedIn or whatever platform that I was using. So I would be going on and, you know, following certain hashtags, like for example, development, and I would be going through and adding value to the marketplace. I would be posting, you know, maybe 
um, you know, some some value pieces, whether that be a blog, a video, uh, you know, even just some text. But I would just begin. I think the thing is with personal branding is people that they they could spend weeks and months and years thinking about who am I, what do I do, what, how do I start. The, the, the truth is just begin. You really can't go too wrong. And I think if you if you are unsure what to post, just do a bit of research of who's posting what in your industry. And it doesn't even have to be linked to your industry. It could be something that you're just really passionate about. I, I have multiple passions. One of them is, you know, the whole self-belief and self-awareness. But I'm also passionate about helping people, you know, get out of the rat race, find their dream career or start a business or just find the courage just to, you know, start living the life that they want to live, you know, and I honestly think the biggest thing that holds people back is themselves, their limiting beliefs and their, you know, just their, just that lack of courage, that lack to sort of push out of their comfort zone and the lack of clarity. So I just think out of everything, one thing this pandemic is teaching us is that everything can be stripped away, right? We can lose our jobs, we can lose, you know, you know, our homes I hope not but like there's lots of things that can be taken away but the one thing that we'll never lose is ourselves right so your personal brand now more than ever is the one thing that people can't take away for you and if you are investing time in offering value to the marketplace if you are showing up and you know sort of yeah offering value and being seen I really don't think that too much like nothing bad can come from that providing you're not posting crazy content that's you know (laughs) as well you know it is in terms of like LinkedIn specifically that is a professional networking site and if you are just starting out what you know what courage could mean to you for just starting out is sharing a post share something share an article from someone else or another company or another industry expert that you feel would add value to Mm. the network that you have on your LinkedIn profile. So it doesn't have to be, you know, you know, we're we're not by any means suggesting that you go out there and start writing Mm. articles for your industry, you know, just being, keeping, remaining engaged with your audience, I think is, is definitely um, a good goal to have if you're just starting out with that, with that piece as well. Yeah. Yeah. I actually had um, someone reach out to me the other day and ask me this very question. It's like, you know, uh, George, I'm about to do my first post on LinkedIn. Um, he did the Land or Dream course, uh, Land or Dream job course. And he was like, I, but I'm ready to go. Like, and any more tips? And I was like, look, I said, you know, you're a, he was a career contractor. And I was like, well, what I would be posting is, you know, how you're approaching the job market differently to where, what you were doing, say, a year ago. And what your, you know, just your experience as a contractor. And, and just, again, it's just telling your story. You know, it could be like, or just sharing your experience because, you know, you, you don't underestimate like the power of your own journey. You know, that's all personal brand is. It's just your story, your journey, your unique gift that you can share with the world. And everyone's got a story to tell and that will resonate or benefit somebody. And I think, you know, if you can tell it in a way that's engaging, that offers lots of value, then, then yeah, that that's only going to impact people in a positive way. And I think at the moment, like one thing we don't want to be doing is adding to the chaos, you know, so it's like, okay, how can we be helping people at this time? How can we be sharing our knowledge during this time? Hence why you and I sat down and doing this podcast right now, you know, because we want to help. We want to, we've got, you know, we've been in the recruitment industry for years and we're seeing people, you know, like we say, spray and pray on the CV, you know, yeah. like, right, we've got to help. Yeah, and, you know, it genuinely, because it, it's the industry that we're in, it is what we do on a day-to-day basis, and that becomes a tournament, like, totally mm-hmm. automatic. And you forget that some people that find themselves on the job market have potentially been in the same job for the past decade, yeah. you know, or they have just graduated from university, and they're all of a sudden them finding themselves in an incredibly saturated job market, and they do not know what to do, you know. You, they do not know how to strategically approach a job search. And, you know, at the weekend, I actually was watching the news and there was this beautiful young girl who was on the news and she she was a legal assistant, um, if my memory serves me correct. She was telling her story about how over the past couple of months, she'd applied for 600 jobs. And that is just screaming to me, wow, this girl knows her stuff, she has experience, but she just quite simply does not know how to approach the job market. Mm. And that's a major issue because ultimately 
it is a skill as to how you market yourself, how you brand yourself, how you put yourself out there and how you actually land your dream job or the next next step in your career. You know, there, 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 there's a method to it, you know, and right. it does take skill and it takes that patience. But, mm. there, you know, there's definitely steps that you can take to make mm. sure that you are approaching your job hunt in, in the correct way. Um, and that's definitely valuable information yeah. that you and I are passionate about about taking to market yeah absolutely and yeah like Pam and I again you know we sat down uh, a few weeks ago and we were like you know getting so many messages from people like I'm out of work I'm out of work and we sat down and we thought right what can we do how can we serve and we actually have created a a course which is a complete and utter step-by-step guide on exactly what to do if you find yourself out of work you know we go through mindset you know the mindset you need to have right now which is obviously the key piece how to write a resume you know people haven't updated their resume in 10 years you know longer and you know you can't have a boring format resume with 10 pages long like there is a system to it so we go through that uh we go through how to uh, search for jobs how to uh, literally the templates we give you to you know what to say to hr people and recruiters cover letters done for you uh how to nail the interview i think that's a really big one as well because i heard the other day that people were getting interviews but they weren't getting the jobs like you know all these things and then finally like the whole motivation piece as well so you know we we wanted us to do this really as a as a big value piece and for anyone who's listening to this podcast now who you know is out of work or even just wants to improve their mindset during this time um go to the link below we'll put it in the comments and um we'll give you a, an amazing podcast discount so the course has been selling for 297 and for anyone who's listening like we'll give you 200 dollars off the course uh just for listening to this podcast because we just want to serve we really want to help during this time um and look finally let's talk to people who are struggling with motivation right now and keeping that momentum high like you know if let's speak to that girl let's say you know you've sent 600 cvs and you're feeling really flat what advice would you give to her to sort of boost her right now and make sure that she's in a good headspace yeah look i I think definitely you know working on your mindset is incredibly important and you have to really invest in yourself you know going on the journey of securing the next step in your career it's huge it's life-changing we all don't have many jobs in our life you know there's 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 not that many times that you will transition career unless you are a career contractor um but it's a very important decision whenever you land a job you're you're ultimately committing to you know the next three to five years of your life you know so to take time to stop and reflect and truly get yourself in the right mindset and in the right headspace for embarking on your job search is very important take that time plan it learn what the methods are in order to be able to approach the job market in a strategic fashion you know take your time do not apply for 600 jobs you do not need to apply for 600 jobs is ultimately what i am saying you what you need to do is you need to change the way that you are approaching your job search and that is part of you know, what will be uncovered in the course as well. And the reason that, um, you know, we have offered it at that price is because we, we do want it to be accessible mm. to uh, to the majorities, regardless of what industry that you are in. But we also do want people that are embarking on this course to be really committed to going on this journey because it will ultimately add a lot of value. Mm. Um, and it, it does unearth some great secrets to enable you to... To, to basically land the job that you want that you want to secure but I think definitely you you need to you need to work on yourself you you definitely need to be ready to invest in yourself I completely That's agree key. I completely agree and I think you know it's just it's taking it day by day it's not wait you know like I say it's not waking up going oh another day you know how am I gonna you know not more jobs to apply for I think it's thinking okay it's I say it in the course it's treating each day as if you already have landed your job. And I said to someone the other day, I was on the phone, I said, well, would you hire you now? Would you hire, if you're an employer, would you hire yourself the way you are behaving day by day? And they paused and they just said, Georgie, you've completely, I I don't know what to say. And I said, well, what's the answer? And they said, no. And I was like, well, why not? 
And they said, because I'm not waking up till 10 o'clock. I'm lounging around most of the day. My mindset's just not not good. I'm staying in my... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just binging Netflix. I'm, I'm in my slippers and my dressing gown. You know, you're so right. I, I really need to take action and actually completely reframe my whole approach and it was just that breakthrough that they needed they were like wow I've not thought about it that way before so again going back to the whole mindset piece this is why your approach matters this is why you know how you wake up every day the thoughts you think you know and and making sure that you are thinking powering thoughts because I, I do truly believe what you give out is what you get back and if you're starting every day going oh you know, I've sent hundreds of CVs and I'm not going to get a response. You're not going to get a response. And when and then when you go onto an interview and you are speaking to hiring managers or HR directors, if you're not in a good space, if you're not in a really good emo- emotional state, they're going to pick up on that. You know, even online, you know, people can feel people's energy through the phone, via Skype. Don't ever think that you can get away with just you know, bowling into a an interview five minutes before without doing any sort of, you know, state change. You know, you can't just roll out of bed and get jump on an interview in the morning. You have to get in the right frame of mind because right now you're probably, in, that HR manager is probably interviewing 20 people. You know, who they're going to hire? They're going to hire you, you know, who just jumped out of bed, you know, as low energy or they're going to hire you know, John Smith, who came to the interview nice and prepared, well-researched, well-presented and in a really bubbly mindset, they're going to hire that person. And this is the thing, this is being massively overlooked. And I know it's really hard because it's so easy to get yourself into a rut, but you've really got to work on yourself now more than ever and think, okay, mindset's crucial. How can I get myself into a good state every day? And, you know, there are things that you can do and I won't go into all of them now, but, you know, I think it does all start with how you show up and like you said, beautifully, be investing in yourself now more than ever is absolutely crucial. So yeah, 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 absolutely agree. And you know, you you ultimately you need to implement these strategies into your day to day life when you are approaching your job search. So there's strategies that you need to implement for personal development, and you need to marry them up with strategies that are going to help your career progression. So absolutely, it's a blend. I completely agree. It's an absolute blend of the two. And if you get both sides of it right, Mm. it will come together beautifully. Completely agree. Pam, I mean, it goes without saying, I absolutely love chatting to you. We chat multiple times a day. I love her. Yeah, yeah. So I really hope that... Especially Friday afternoon ones with wine. Absolutely. Um, Well, look, um, I really hope that everyone listening to this has got some amazing takeaways. Look, if you are listening to this and you're out of work, go and check out that course because it really is, uh, you know, the blueprint of how I would go about landing a job right now. And, you know, even if you listen to this podcast and you just take one thing from it, just, just really make sure that you are getting in the right headspace every single day your mindset is key right now don't lose faith and um, keep on putting yourself out of your comfort zone keep on taking that proactive approach because that is the that's the new norm and we all just have to accept that this is the new world we're living in and the more we resist the more we're going to suffer so Pam amazing to have you on Uh, for all of my listeners out there if you did love this episode please go and give it a rating I love seeing the reviews so please do that now and I look forward to hopefully coaching you all on getting your dream job and uh, stay positive stay strong and I will speak to you again soon take care Thank you so much for listening to the Mind to Lead podcast. I really hope you got some great takeaways and key learnings from this episode. To help us spread the message, please give us a rating and leave us a review. We love reading your thoughts and your insights and your learnings. And look, reach out to me. Reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm Georgie Hubbard. Reach out to me on Instagram. I'm Georgie L. Hubbard. Let's connect. I hope you have an incredible day and I look forward to speaking to you all again soon. Thank you.